Okay, so we got some news for Korea. This one is for updates that are coming in November, so this will most likely cover two weeks at once. And it's it's some exciting news. It's some exciting news, some long awaited updates. So uh, let's cover them all. Most of all, some new monsters are being added. So these are the dragons, the long awaited dragons. And they gave us a little bit of a teaser on their skill. So the fire attribute wizard type, so mage type dragon, greatly increases the amount of damage it deals to targets with lower attack power than itself. Very smart, like Savannah, right? Increases the target's skill cooldown, reduces the opposing summoner's mana, and applies oppression. That is, that is a stack skill set. Critical resistance increases while using the skill. I don't know, bro. That is an ultimate cooldown increasing tool. You deduce cooldown and you don't allow them to increase cooldown because of the oppression, right? Then, the Water Dragon is also a mage type and it reduces defense and grants knockdown. If the target is knocked down, freeze or fainted, the Absolute Hero skill is activated. This will most likely be the second skill. And the Absolute Zero skill grants you a spell shield, ignores damage reduction and uses freeze and cold blast, mana degeneration rate and cold... Wait, what? Oh, no, no. Our mana regeneration rate increases when killing an enemy with Cold Blast. And if you look at the skills and you have a certain One Punch Man unit in your box, Water Attribute Dragons provide similar utility to summoners who do not possess Genos. So this is essentially a Water Type Genos clone. Yeah? Now, the Wind Dragon is a support type, and this dragon heals team members with low health during a normal attack, or basically a basic attack. Uh, increases the amount of damage received, increases the attack speed on itself, heals team members, removes debilitating effects, I believe this is referring to all harmful effects, and grants immunity when CC effects are removed. If an enemy inflicts silence, bind, stun, freeze, or knockdown, it also, or, I mean, inflicts that on a teammate, the recovery and deep of the more skills are used again, I'm assuming automatically. You are immune to CC effects. Oh, yo, yo, this is a stacked skill. Now, the Light Dragon seems to be a support type as well, and his kit is a bit weird. So, uh, the Light Attribute Support Dragon first skill reduces its health by a certain percentage and reduces damage and critical hitting. While the second skill grants recovery and continuous recovery and increases the critical hit resistance. The lower her health, the more damage you give, and the less damage and recovery you receive. So, it sort of sounds like a damage dealer based on your HP, but also it's a support time and it doesn't really mention doing damage, so it's a bit weird there. But yeah, he, a great unit on those. And then the Dark, uh, the wizard type, looks like the Dark one will be a mage as well. And uh, the, this dragon has a chance to inflict fear when hit. Ignore death denial effects, grant undivivable, and if the target dies, Remove strengthening effects per hit and grants undead. How many effects are that? When hit by a skill below a certain stamina, it inflicts fear and undead on nearby enemies, increases the amount of damage done when attacking with light dark properties, and increases the amount of damage received when hit by fire, water, and wind. I'm sorry, this is just. This sounds like an insane kit. We'll see how it goes out, but. I'm um, so, nah, this looks stacked. This looks very stacked. Okay, let's go further. Okay, another system called the Pet Favorable Build. So this is gonna be something like a buddy system from various games, if you call it. So there will be a total of five levels for each monster, and you can level up your monster by using stuff like uh, giving them a gift, uh, doing field hunting, gathering, mining, fishing, uh, sending them on exploration quests, guild requests, all of that, and once you level these up, uh, as you can see, if you achieve a certain affinity level for four or five star pet, you can add two more types, B and C to the existing one A, for that pet's encyclopedia effect, and you can select one of these to apply. So I'm guessing once you level up, uh, you will be able to add an additional book effect, and you will be able to choose a book effect that you want. So this could be pretty big for people 
who have high level book effects for a certain unit, yeah? Also, this is a big one, so the summary transformation system. So you already know uh, some of these potions, right? So uh, whenever uh, the one year event happened, we got a lot of potions and it looks like these potions are getting put into a permanent thing. So there will be a total of six of them and they will be used in order to uh, improve your gathering, crafting abilities all there, right? So. Uh, as you can see here, uh, Har and Fady speed up gathering speed, Lizardman and Living Armor speed up mining, and Marshall Cat, which is probably the Marshall Cat, and Shark Shark increase fishing speed. And basically, uh, you can set these to be automatic and you can level them up up to level 5. So I'm assuming the higher level, the more uh, speed you will receive. So we excited to see what that brings up. Also, this is sort of a new system, so I'm going to read it through. A magic engineering system is added. By disassembling certain items, you can obtain disassembled materials, which allow you to obtain other items. Items that can be disassembled include general items, material items, and emblem items, including crafted gems that apparently cannot be disassembled. So all of those evasion gems uh, might finally have a use for you. Uh, you can craft new items with the composition. Uh, magic fuel is consumed when crafting and the fuel is automatically charged over time, so much like energy. The level of magic engineering increases each time it is crafted and the level of the crafts that can be crafted also increases depending on the level. Yeah, uh, based on this, it looks like they're just giving us some extra use for the unwanted items, so that's always a welcome feature. And yeah, apart from that, uh, they also mentioned the North American anniversary. So this will be a four week event and there will be various login events as well as events where you can obtain these uh, little cafe transports, whatever you want to call them. And after that, there's just a lot of various quality of life changes. So as you can see, uh, a multi wind rule uh, has been introduced to friendly battle arena. So you can set better best of three, best of five matches, all of that. Also, another great feature for a competitive arena is that now uh, the list of summoners that you are attacking will be hidden. So their outfits will be changed and their name will be hidden. So you no longer can uh, avoid targeting friendly people, guildies, all of that. There seems to be some changes to the world boss, but these are mostly uh, sort of quality of life improvements where you can see the damage that your team deals, uh, not just your summoners on your small four-person team, so that's pretty cool. Also, Guild Raid Season 2. Uh, I believe that's like the first change in a good year that we're seeing for Guild Raid, and it looks like a new boss will be coming out. I believe this might be the boss that is available in level 20 Trial of Ascension Hard Mode. Although, don't put in that, he does look pretty similar. So, pretty excited about that. And yeah, apart from this, there's quite a few uh, quality of life improvements that aren't really too impactful. So, to save time, I'm not gonna cover them, but... And yeah, peace.